Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Hello, folks, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and today we have a couple of Native American stories for you that fit in with the month of October and Halloween, don't we, Rod? Yes, we do, Steve, and you've got one about the legend of Penn's Cave from Pennsylvania, so let's hear it. All right. Well, Penn's Cave, in case you're not aware of it, is located in the Ridge and Valley region in the Appalachian Highlands in central Pennsylvania, or as they would call it up there, the don't shoot me, Rod. The Appalachian Highlands. Yeah, it's okay. We'll forgive you this time. <laughs> well, the legend that surrounds the cave is a story of love denied. It was originally told by a fellow by the name of Isaac Steele, an old Seneca Indian, in 1892. It seems that in the 1700s, Chief Okocho had seven full-grown warrior sons and a daughter, Nitani, whose beauty was immeasurable and who was guarded by her brothers very carefully. Well, a young Frenchman named Malachi Boyer from Lancaster County came to their camp one day to trade for furs with Chief Okocho when he caught a glimpse of Nitani and fell in love instantly. When the chief's sons went out to hunt, he would sneak into the Seneca camp, steal away with Nitani. The two fell in love and made plans to run away and marry secretly, since traditions at that time didn't allow for the Seneca to marry outside their tribe. When the time was ripe, they made their escape into the night. In the morning, when Chief Okocho was alerted of his daughter's absence, he sent his seven sons to track her and Malachi down and bring them back to camp. Well, the brothers found the runaway couple just outside the eastern settlements and brought them back swiftly. Chief Okocho then ordered his sons to throw Malachi into the water cave and guard the entrance to ensure that he would not escape and run away with his daughter once again. Well, for about a week, Malachi swam back and forth in the dark waters of the cave, looking for an exit that wasn't guarded by the Seneca, but eh, to no avail. Starving and out of energy, Malachi vowed that Nitani's brothers would not see him die. He traveled way back to a far recess at one end of the cavern, crawled up to a dry bank, and died. Nitani's brothers later ventured into the cave with torches, found his body, tied him up with heavy rocks, and threw him in the deepest waters of the cave river by their father's request. And they say, Rod, to this day, tour guides and visitors claim that on some occasions, you can hear the Frenchman's ghost crying out his lost love's name. Wow. In fact, two tour guides have admitted hearing her name come from a male voice on separate occasions, and they believe firmly that the cave is haunted by the ghost of Malachi. Ghost hunters have also visited the cave and found plenty of abnormal behavior, including female voices, Native American languages being spoken, heavy breathing, and distant conversations, as well as other strange visions during their stay. And by the way, Rod, Nita Nee, the chief's beautiful daughter, is immortalized in central Pennsylvania as the mascot of Penn State University, the Nittany Lion, mm-hmm. as well as local natural monuments, Nittany Mountain and Nittany Valley. Penn Cave opened its doors as a cave show in 1885, and boat tours are still available to the public at a reasonable rate. Wow. What a story. Yeah, and you have a story as well, a little bit farther down in the mountains in western North Carolina, in fact, don't you? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I've heard of this place all my life, Blowing Rock, North Carolina, and the legend of Blowing Rock. Well, I'm getting ready to tell you the legend of Blowing Rock, as the town of Blowing Rock, North Carolina, is named for the Blowing Rock which is an outcropping of rock studded with crystals. Now, this rock is famous for the constant, strong upward draft that comes out of the valley below. This wind is so steady that in winter, snow will fall upwards around it. Now, locals tell a story that explains this unusual phenomena as a romantic tale of love triumphing over duty and difference. Here's that story. Once long ago, a young Chickasaw woman and her father moved deep into the mountains to escape the constant war between the Chickasaw and the Cherokee. One day, the young woman, who was out gathering food, when she happened upon a handsome young man hunting in the woods. The two fell instantly in love, but they were also aware of the danger that their love posed. The young man was a Cherokee, 
just like Romeo and Juliet, and I was getting there, Steve, these two lovers should have been enemies. They met secretly in the woods. For months, they enjoyed each other's company in secret places in the mountains and ignored what the rest of the world would think. Then one evening, the two lovers saw a strange red glow in the sky. They felt drawn toward a certain cliff and stood on its edge as they watched the sky grow a deeper and deeper red until it was almost the color of fresh blood. Ooh. It was obviously a sign, and not a good one either. The young man understood that sign, too. He knew that it was a warning that the Cherokee and the Chicksaw nations were preparing for a huge battle and that blood would be lost on both sides. The young man knew his duty was with his Cherokee people, but he knew his heart was with his Chickasaw love. Unwilling to decide which meant more to him, the young man chose another way. He leapt off the rock the two were standing on into the valley below. The young woman, horrified at what had happened, prayed that the gods who controlled the wind would send her love back to her. They heard her prayer, and the young man was lifted back into her arms. That's almost unreal, but that's the way the story goes, Steve. And the young lovers journeyed together to each other's lands and used the example of their love to bring peace to both of their nations. And the wind still blows strongly, still to this day, at Blowing Rock. Wow, what a story. That is wild. I'd never heard that before until now. Here on stories. All right. Well, there you go. Not quite history stories, but Appalachian stories nonetheless. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast at iTunes, Google Play, or on your favorite podcast app. We're on Facebook at Stories of Appalachia and on Twitter at Story Appalachia. Till next time, take care. So long, everybody. <laughs>